World Cities. This video covers the world city topic for A2 Geography. Key terms that you need to know as part of this topic are counter-urbanisation, where people move from large urban areas to smaller urban or rural areas. Reurbanisation, the movement of people and economic activities back into city centres. One method of this is gentrification, where people renovate existing rundown housing. Suburbanisation. The movement of people from living in the inner parts of a city to living on the outer edges. Urban growth. An increase in the number of urban dwellers. And urbanisation. Urbanisation is the increase of the proportion of a country's population that lives in towns and cities, caused by natural population growth and migration into urban areas from rural areas. Various push and pull factors cause people to move away from rural areas. Push factors include agricultural problems like desertification, inadequate medical provision, disease and natural disasters. Pull factors include the prospect of better paid employment in factories, service industries or the informal sector, education and health care and overall better quality of life. At a global scale, rapid urbanisation has occurred over the past 50 years and now almost 50% of the world's population lives in towns and cities. Sao Paulo, Brazil, urbanisation case study. This city is the largest in the southern hemisphere and the metropolitan area had a population of 19 million in 2008. Between 1991 and 2000, the population increased by 16%. This major industrial area initially grew as a centre of agriculture and exporting cotton and coffee. The environment has been greatly impacted by this large population. High levels of sulphur dioxide, lead and other pollutants affect air quality. Sao Paulo, whilst being large and filled with opportunities, has the highest unemployment rate in Brazil and there is a huge divide between the rich and the poor. The richest use helicopters to escape street danger and traffic congestion and the city has more helipads than New York, USA. One region of Sao Paulo has a higher standard of living than Portugal whilst the poorest district has a standard of living that is worse than Sierra Leone. 60% of population growth in the city is absorbed by favelas, rundown housing which occupy the poorest and most hazardous areas, such as hilltops, slopes and floodplains. In these favelas, running water is of little supply and poor, polluted quality. Likewise, electricity and plumbing is scarce. Attempts have been made by the Brazilian government to improve housing quality. In the early 1990s, the city supplied funding direct to families to allow them to build or renovate their housing. Increased global urbanisation has resulted in the development of many millionaire cities, which are cities that hold more than one million people. India and China have the most millionaire cities in the world. There are also a significant number of megacities. These hold more than 10 million people, of which there are only 20 in the world. World cities are those which have a great influence on a global scale because of their financial status and worldwide commercial power. New York, London and Tokyo are world cities and they house the headquarters of many transnational corporations and centres of world finance. Urban regeneration. Large squatter settlements or shanty towns develop in cities where many newcomers to the city are unable to afford housing or there are simply no houses to rent. Makeshift housing is often made on unused land with scrap material like corrugated iron and they often don't have running water or electricity, like the favelas in Sao Paulo mentioned earlier. These slums can cause many problems for a city. They can easily spread infections and disease due to lack of sewage systems and often contain antisocial behaviours such as crime, prostitution and drug dealing. They're also not very attractive a lot of the time as they're often unplanned builds and don't have rubbish collection services, so waste piles up. City authorities are aware of these problems, but rarely have enough resources to tackle them. In some cities, such as Lagos in Nigeria, the authorities construct large high-rise apartment blocks to rehouse people. However, these sometimes cause breakdowns in family and friendship structures, as people are contained inside their apartments rather than being open and social. Most third world countries don't have sufficient funds to build these types of housing either. 
Authorities sometimes help migrants into the city by allowing them to build housing under certain guidelines in areas close to workplaces. These are called site and service schemes. Often, electricity, water and sanitation is provided. Some cities are affected by the Brown Agenda, a mix of problems brought about by rapid urban development. Traditional issues, limited availability of land, shelter and services, plus problems resulting from industrialisation such as toxic waste, water and air pollution, are components to the Brown Agenda. International bodies such as the UN have proposed solutions to the Brown Agenda. An urban profile should be undertaken with public consultation over issues, with commitment from those in charge to improve these issues. The risks, purposes and impacts of improvement strategies should be assessed. Action plans are then put into place. These plans must be cost effective. Further consultation and involvement at a local level is prioritised. Calcutta, India. Case study. Calcutta is the centre of a dense, overcrowded rural population. The area suffers from many natural disasters, often flooding by monsoon rains or cyclones. Each year, a new war or flood brings refugees flocking to Calcutta. Many of the squatter settlements flood easily, destroying them and bringing disease in polluted flood water. The Calcutta Metropolitan Development Authority has tried to improve issues by reinforcing the banks of the River Hooghly and attempting to stop people from living on the land nearest the river, improving sewage disposal. In the 1960s, there were about 1,000 sewage-related deaths a year from cholera, improving water supply. There is now at least one tap for every 25 houses. Mud tracks are being replaced with concrete roads. Installation of street lighting to improve safety and give some light to people who do not have electricity. Suburbanization has resulted in the outward growth of urban development that has engulfed surrounding villages and rural areas. This has been facilitated by the public transport systems and increased use of private cars. Since 1950, suburban expansion has increased and has been better planned. In the 1950s and 1960s, large-scale construction of council housing took place on the only land available, which was the suburban fringe. In the 1970s, there was a move toward Towards home ownership, which led to private housing estates being built, also on the urban fringe. On the edge of town, where more land was available, became the favored location for new offices, factories, and shopping outlets. In recent years, new detached and semi-detached houses and bungalows have been built in ur suburban areas, along with shopping centers and schools. In 1997, the government's population projections suggested that by 2021, the population of England would rise by 7%, but the number of households would rise by 18%. This is due to two things, the increase in the adult population, which accounts for 77% of the growth in demand for households. This is due to the change in age structure of the population, with a fall in the proportion and changes in the way in which people choose to live, in particular, more divorces and later marriages. 71% of new households will be single people. The following solutions have been suggested. Increasing the number of people living in homes that already exist, building new houses or brownfield sites, which are derelict sites in urban areas, and allowing people to build in rural areas and small towns on land that has not been previously developed.